agricultural workers work temporarily in Canada as an agricultural worker. Agriculture, one of the main opportunities for Canada when it comes to hiring foreign workers. As far as the aging population affect Canada, industries like agriculture will be affected and in that regard, entry of temporary foreign workers in Canada. The Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, ARPA, regulates the entry of all temporary foreign workers into Canada. The Temporary Foreign Worker Program is jointly managed by Human Resources and Skill Development Canada and Citizenship and Immigration Canada. The entry of foreign workers in Canada is driven by employer demand, which means that it's going to be in the side of the employer to prove that they need foreign workers and they need to get authorization from the Government of Canada. There are no numerical limits or quotas. An employer can apply to HRSDC to hire temporary foreign workers when Canadians or permanent residents are not really available, which means they need to prove through recruitment efforts that no Canadian or permanent resident in Canada have applied for the job or do not qualify for the job. Employers may hire foreign workers or nationals from any country in the world to work in any legal occupation provided that both employers and the workers meet the requirements and regulations outlined in ARPA. Entry of temporary foreign workers in agriculture. The immigrant workers who work on Canadian farms come into the country under one of two programs. The Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program, SAP, or the Agricultural String of the Temporary Foreign Workers Program for occupations requiring low levels of formal training. These are the two main programs that Canadian employers can use in Canada to bring foreign workers who have some experience in agricultural work. The Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program The Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program was established in 1966 as a way of bringing Jamaican workers to Canada to help make up for the shortage of apple pickers. The majority of migrant farm workers, about 26,000 a year, come to Canada through this program, with the greatest number coming from Mexico and heading to Ontario. The SOP is open only to workers from Mexico, Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and the nine countries of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. The program is overseen by Human Resources and Social Development Canada, HRSDC, in Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritime Provinces, FARMS and its French language counterpart, FIRM, administered for employers for a fee of 35 per worker, paid by the employer. Under the program, workers can get work permits for up to eight months, and employers can request to have a specific worker return to work for them in the subsequent years, prior to approval by the home country. One of the main differences between the SWAP and the Low Skilled Foreign Worker Program is the involvement of the country's supplying workers. The SOAR countries are responsible for recruiting the workers and are signatories of the workers' employment contracts. SOAR country consulate within Canada are supposed to act as contact points and advocate for workers in terms of ensuring the condition of their contracts are upheld. Workers in the SAP program have the standard employment contract that have been negotiated between the source countries, employers, and the Canadian government. There is one general agreement for Mexico and another for Caribbean countries. As with the low skilled foreign worker program, work permits are issued by Citizenship and Immigration Canada and are tied to one specific employer, which means workers are effectively barred from working from anyone else, even in off periods when their main employer has not worked for them. So that's the main difference of both program. The one for the foreign worker program is employer specific, and the swap program, they is arranged between the countries, government of both countries. So it's a little different in, in execution. Prevailing wage. Wages for sub workers are set annually by the HRSDC and are supposed to reflect the prevailing wage in the labor market for the type of agricultural work being done. For 2012, the prevailing wage rates in Ontario for most agricultural commodity sector 
included in the program, including fruit, vegetables, apiary, greenhouse, tobacco, canning, is 10 25 an hour, according to farms. If you want the latest information, just visit the website of farm and you can check the latest prevailing wage rates used in Ontario and other provinces. The immigrant workers are subject to standard payroll deductions, such as pension, income tax, and employment insurance. On their swap, the employer must enroll workers in provincial health plan and register them with the Workplace Safety Insurance Board. Employers provide free housing, except in BC, where it is partially deducted from workers' wages, but can deduct the cost of a worker's visa, utilities, and part of the transportation from their pay. Extended health coverage is paid for by the source country. In this case, if it's Jamaica, it will be Jamaica, paying for the extended health coverage. If it's in Mexico, it will be Mexico. So that's part of the arrangement and under the South program. When it comes to workplace health and safety, standards vary from place to place and a mix of federal, provincial and municipal authorities are responsible for enforcing them. So depending on the provinces in Canada, those standards on health and safety uh, might vary. They're very different administration of it. But in essence, it, they will be done to protect the foreign workers' safety and health. Temporary Foreign Workers Program A pilot project to bring various classifications of low-skilled temporary workers into Canada has existed since 2002. It's called a Temporary Foreign Worker Program for occupations requiring lower levels of formal training and in January 2011, the federal government created an agricultural stream within this border program to a streamline application from the agricultural sector. So it's in 2011 that the government decided to create this stream inside the temporary foreign pro, uh, worker program in order to facilitate the recruitment of, of foreign workers that specialize in agriculture, which uh, the employers are, are looking for in Canada. The program gives employers much more choices than the swap and hiring agricultural workers from abroad. This program is not limited to specific countries. That's different from the, the sub program. Under the temporary foreign workers program, employers can hire from anywhere and can bring workers in for up to 24 months. Workers can be rehired through the program for another 24 months before they have to take a four year break during which they are not eligible to work in Canada. So if you are a foreign worker and you come under the agriculture stream in the temporary foreign worker program, you can work for 24 months. If the employee is happy with you, you know, he probably can rehire you for another 24 months, but after that you're going to have a van of four years, that is basically a break, in which you can apply for work in Canada. Some people like that arrangement. As far as you can secure a permanent resident during that period, but again, you're going to depend if you qualify under the other programs in Canada. So now we, let's see the difference between both programs. One of the main differences between the Temporary Foreign Worker Program and the SWAP program is that there is no standard employment contract with the Temporary Foreign Worker. Each employer does an agreement with the worker and all this must be approved by the HRSDC. In the temporary foreign worker, employers generally rely on private recruiters, not government officials, to find workers, and that's something important. In the temporary foreign worker stream, is based basically on the employers getting private recruiters, and there's no government officials in that relation. In the swap, you have sending country involvement, and you also have an ongoing relationship to set expectations around the standards. So, this is more government managed in the second program. Employers who hire workers through the Temporary Foreign Worker Program are responsible for the full cost of their airfare to and from Canada, but do not have to pay for housing. That's one of the other difference. They do have to provide suitable and affordable accommodation at a cost of $30 a week or less if specified by provincial standards, 
which can increase by 1% a year. That's another of the difference. And they also have to pay for the workers' health coverage until the provincial health plan kicks in. So some provincial health plans have to wait, have a waiting period. So the employer, in this case, when they bring a foreign worker, they need to cover the health coverage of the worker until the provincial plan is start. Okay? Facts about the program. Ontario employs 60% of international immigrants in Canada on temporary visas working in agriculture, followed by Quebec at 14% and BC at 13%. So basically these are the main provinces in Canada. Ontario is the biggest one when it comes to recurring uh, workers uh, in the agriculture industry. And then Quebec and British Columbia are the second and the third in that regard. Those workers could be employed at a wide range of agriculture and agri-food operations, including mushroom farms, as chicken catchers, or as greenhouse and fruit farm workers. How long do migrant agricultural workers typically remain in Canada? Workers in Canada under the swap program can stay up to eight months at the time. They also can also return year after year. They don't have the limit of the temporary foreign worker they can return year after year. Workers under the pilot project come into the country under a one-year contract that can be extended for up to four years. What countries do the migrant workers come from? When the swap arch started in 1966, the main source of workers was Jamaica. Mexico was added in the 1970s. Other Caribbean countries are also participate in the program, which focuses on providing workers for the harvest season. In the temporary foreign worker, employers seeking workers for occupations that are designated as low skill could hire people from any country they wish, provided that person could get a visa. Under the temporary foreign worker program, the countries that tend to send workers to work in agriculture and food industry these days are Guatemala, the Philippines, Thailand, Mexico, Jamaica, Nicaragua, the United States, Ukraine, and Vietnam. And now let's take a look at the next lecture where we're going to explore some of the online resources available for people interested in working in agriculture in Canada. Thank you very much.